Good evening, gentlemen crusaders of the class of 2020. As president of Archbishop Reardon High School, it is my honor and privilege to address you from the Linlin Theater. Today is the feast of Mary, mother of the church. Just as Mary is central to our campus, we see her beautiful Carrera marble statue prominently displayed and towering above our courtyard. So we must keep Mary's great example central in our lives, in our decision-making. This is the aim and the great hope of a Catholic Marianist education, that we persevere through life carrying hope, love and responsibility to family, and also the ability to adapt and change according to the many challenges we encounter in life. Blessed William Joseph Chaminade left us an important example and a message as he carried on the great and noble mission of spreading Christ's words among the terror-stricken population of France during the Revolutionary Era. In the midst of chaos, always move forward. Today is about marking an important step forward. Today is about taking time to reflect prayerfully, honoring and glorifying God, and thanking God for the great gift of an Archbishop Reardon High School education. You have successfully adapted to the many challenges of this school year, and now you are just on the verge of graduating from Archbishop Reardon High School. This class exemplifies so many great things about Reardon. But it's not the award-winning journalism, the top 20 college acceptances, nor the marquee athletic victories of the fall and winter, but the compassion and love you show for each other that distinguishes you the most and the ability to adapt and overcome a multitude of challenges. You were, by all measures, one of the greatest classes to come through Reardon, and you will be missed. But never forget, Reardon is another home for you, and you're always welcome back. I wish to thank Father Fowler, Mr. Daytok, Mr. Magnaye, and Mr. Rassam for making today's baccalaureate service possible, and I truly look forward to addressing you again as a class on your graduation day, June 27th at 1 o'clock p.m. And now, here's our Director of Campus Ministry, Mr. Alex Daytok. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Courier. Good evening, class of 2020, parents and family members, faculty, staff, students, alumni, members of the Society of Mary, and honored guests. Tonight we have a special baccalaureate prayer service for the seniors as they gather one last time as a class in prayer. Now for our opening song, New Creation, with Mrs. Flaviani. No longer live 
a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I give thanks to my God, always on your account, for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you are enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. His foundation upon the holy mountains, the Lord loves. The gates of Zion, more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Glorious things are said to you, O city of God. And of Zion they shall say, One and all were born in her. And he who has established her is the Most High Lord. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled, this man was born here. And all shall sing in their festive dance, My home is within you. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. O happy virgin, you gave birth to the Lord. O blessed mother of the church. You warm our hearts with the Spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. 
the gospel of the Lord. I think it's fair to say that none of us expected this moment. I never could have expected when I left your class at the end of your freshman year that I would be back preaching at your baccalaureate prayer service. I also never could have expected that I'd be preaching to an empty theater. I'm sure you all couldn't have expected that the final months of your senior year would have been taken away from you. And first and foremost, I just want to offer my condolences. Seriously. It's a painful reality, reality that the final few months of your senior year were taken away from you. I'm sure some of you were looking forward to that last sports season. You were looking forward maybe to the last chance you could be in a school musical or the last opportunity to perform in the spring concert. And yet, it was taken away for you from you. I feel especially for the basketball team who I was following from a distance and how you all had a chance at a state championship, but all for naught as the season was unexpectedly ended. While this has been a tough moment for all of you, I'm sure, I do think it's taught you an important lesson for life, which is to expect the unexpected. The truth is, as human beings, a lot of times we like to act like we have control over our lives, complete control, and that we know everything that's going to happen and we can control what's going to happen. But the truth is that we are vulnerable and limited as human beings, and as adults, many unexpected things happen in our life. And so the question often in life is not why. Why is this happening? Why to me? Why at this time? The better question is how? How am I going to respond to the unexpected? I chose today's gospel reading because it's the example of two holy people, the Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph, responding to the unexpected. Neither of them could have really imagined what was going to be asked of them, something that was seemingly impossible. And yet, when they hear the will of God, they don't complain, they don't overly question, they don't cower in fear. They surrender to the moment. They embrace the unexpected, and they strive to live it to the best of their ability according to God's will. And this is what we are called to do often in our lives is to respond to the unexpected to the best of our ability according to God's will, seeking to do so with a certain sense of serenity and trust. One of my favorite authors is Viktor Frankl. He was a man who suffered during World War II in the Jewish internment camps. And he survived, and afterwards he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And in that book, he said, Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. And so no matter what happens in our life, we always have the power to choose how we're going to respond. And this is really what defines our character as human beings. It's easy to do the right thing, to act the right way when things are going well in our life. But our true character shines forth in moments that we don't expect and how we respond to those moments. And as men of character, as men of faith, I hope that you respond to the unexpected with truth, with goodness, and with beauty. Now, this is obviously much easier said than done. It's easy to say that we should respond to the unexpected well, but when it actually happens in our life, it's far harder to actually do. Sometimes in our life, it feels like we are on the water, like a ship tossed about the sea amidst the waves, 
and the wind as the unexpected elements come into our life. But it's so important to remind ourselves that we're not alone, that our life is anchored in Christ. One of the early Christian symbols was the anchor, because the idea was that amidst everything that goes on in this world, that Christ is our anchor. He is the rock that stabilizes our life. Yes, there is so much we can't control. Yes, there are so many unexpected things that will happen. And yet in Christ, we can have a certain sense of stability, a certain sense of hope and faith that good can come from the unexpected. In the gospel, we heard that another name for Christ is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And so this is our anchor in times of trouble, in times of things that are unexpected happening in our life, that God is with us in Christ. He is our anchor. He is our strength. And so we can respond to the unexpected with truth, with goodness and beauty, because we know God is with us. We know that God can bring good out of suffering, good out of the unexpected. And so once again, class of 2020, I'm sorry for what you've experienced these last few months. I wouldn't wish it upon any senior class. But I hope it's taught you a powerful lesson that you will take with you as you leave Archbishop Reardon. That the unexpected will happen in your life. It will happen again. But always remember that you have the freedom to choose of how you'll respond to the unexpected. And I hope as men of character, as men of faith, that you respond to the unexpected with truth, with goodness, and with beauty, always knowing that your life is in God's hands and that Christ is our anchor, our rock amidst the uncertainties of our life. May God bless and protect you always as you go forth from Archbishop Reardon High School.
We now take this time to ask our God for guidance and courage. We entrust ourselves to God as each graduate enters their time of transition from Archbishop Reardon High School. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world beyond these walls of Archbishop Reardon High School, that the class of 2020 now enters, that we lead with courage to promote peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our school, country, and all the nations of the world, that they may lead with wisdom and integrity in ways to help bring about the kingdom of God here on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the class of 2020 of Archbishop Reardon High School, who are bidding farewell that we remain strong in our commitment to our faith, compassion, and integrity. We ask God for strength as we leave Reardon prepared to pursue our dreams and positively impact the world around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families of each of the graduates represented here today, as well as to the faculty, staff, and administration of ARHS, that they come to know the profound gratitude we have for them for helping us grow into the mature young men we are today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For future students of Archbishop Reardon High School, that they continue the Catholic Marianist tradition by their commitment to animate faith, utilize their leadership skills, and embrace their calling to be the next role models for the ARHS community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they experience healing, acceptance, and compassion as they go through their challenges. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Before a final blessing for everyone, I'd like to offer a special prayer of blessing for the class of 2020. Lord Jesus Christ, you tell us you are the way, the truth, and the life. We thank and praise you for all the gifts and blessings that you've bestowed upon this class during their time at Archbishop Reardon. We pray that as they go forth from this high school, that they might go forth as men of character, that you might fill them with your strength, your peace, and your wisdom. Help them, Lord, in times of trial to know that you are there with them. Give them the grace they need to share your love, your truth, and your goodness with this world. Please be with them, please guide them, and please help them to know that you are always present to them. And may Almighty God bless the class of 2020 and all here present. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Thank you for that beautiful prayer service, Father Faller, and our singers, Laura Flaviani and Henry Bensuardo, our readers, Antonio Maffei and Brandon Vargas. At this time, as we close our prayer service tonight, I'd like to bring up one of our distinguished seniors of the class, Mr. Aidan Murtaugh, to give his senior reflection. Greetings, parents, faculty, staff, and the class of 2020. I am Aidan Murtaugh, this year's vice president, cross country team captain, life team member, but above all, diehard crusader. I come to you through this video to reflect on our class's past four years at Reardon High School. It all started almost four years ago when we were sitting down as a class right here in this theater, being told by all of our counselors and teachers that we were the class of vision, a class unlike any other. I still remember my ninth grade self hearing this message and thinking, wow, what a corny slogan. What the heck is that supposed to mean? But fast forward four years, and truly, our class will go down as one of the most iconic ever. But for the class of vision, we sure were blindsided by a lot of changes. Despite these unexpected changes, however, our class always managed to see the bigger picture. We had the vision and foresight to know that our responses to these changes were so much more important than the changes themselves. Our responses were our legacy. That is why I'm so proud to be a member of this graduating class, a class that fielded countless changes with grace, maturity, and with the vision of a better future. Coming into high school, my vision was pretty cloudy. I had no clue what school would be like, how the teachers would be, or how I would fit in to this new community. Almost immediately though, I encountered a community that wanted me to learn, grow, and succeed. Through this network of support, I experienced growth and maturity beyond my wildest imaginations and learned many lessons along the way. Looking back on my high school journey, I have countless takeaways, but the most prominent lesson I've learned is simply to always have something to look forward to. As I went through Reardon, I realized that if I stopped looking at school as a job or as a burden, then it will stop feeling that way. It was definitely not easy to do at times, but I always found something positive to look forward to, which made it so much easier to get through the day. Maybe I wasn't in the mood for history class one day. Well, at least I knew that I'd have the chance to sit on Mr. Fern's couch and be king for the day. Or maybe there was a meeting at lunch that I really didn't want to go to. Well, at least I knew I could get my food past Mr. Vizali, who was standing guard in the halls. And whatever it was I was doing, I tried to find something about it that excited me. And soon enough, I was genuinely excited to tackle whatever came my way. When I looked for something good, I found it. Throughout high school, I also had bigger things to look forward to. When a new school year began or a new sports season rolled around, I would set new goals to work for. But at the back of my mind, I knew that it was the work itself that I was most excited for. The perfect example of this happened during my junior year. I had gotten through the first three days of school and got to leave early for a track meet down at Valley Christian. Of course, it was raining that day and my hamstrings were screaming from the previous day in the weight room. But I got through my race, relieved that the hard part was over. But wait, here comes coach, and he lets me know that I should get in a couple more miles on the day, so I'd be running the two mile. So in the rain, wind, and cold, I towed the line, but something still didn't seem right. I looked to the right, and then the left, and it's all purple. There were no valley guys on the track. It wasn't even a race. But the gun went off, and I got to experience eight laps of pure pain and suffering 
while the Valley guys sat warm and cozy underneath their tents. Now, this was probably the most difficult track meet I've ever had to endure. But oddly enough, I actually enjoyed something about this experience. I felt accomplished, ready to tackle my next challenge and achieve the goals that I had set out for. I got over all the obstacles in my way and became stronger, faster, better because of it. This whole process was so grueling, yet so rewarding, that it was one of the most fulfilling experiences I'd ever had. Through experiences like this, I realized how important it is to have something to look forward to, because that is what motivates me to experience these awesome feelings of improvement and growth along the way. This process, this journey to become a better version of myself is so rewarding for me that when I finally do reach my goals, at the back of my mind, I'm a little sad to know that it all has to come to an end. And that brings us here to graduation, the end of a four-year process that we'll remember for the rest of our lives. This has been our goal since we started high school, but now that it's finally here, we're a little sad to know that it all has to come to an end. Leaving high school, we definitely have a lot to look back on, but we also have a lot ahead of us. Soon, we'll have to reset our goals and restart the process all over again. But we're the class of vision, the class that has seen it all, survived it, and become better because of it. Leaving Reardon, our vision may seem a little cloudy, but I know that no matter where we end up, we sure have a lot to look forward to. Thank you for listening.